3D QW says, how do you fight Joe Biden after giving him your vote? Because you're not voting. The, the, vo- the vote isn't the fight. You're voting for the person you want to fight as president. Fighting Trump gets you nothing. It caused you to have to refight fights you already won. It takes things backwards. It, it risks the lives of many people. It, it increases hate crimes, as we've seen over the past four years. But whether it's on DACA, climate change, the Paris Climate Accord, um, the Dakota Access Pipeline that Trump restarted after Obama ended it, uh, the Iran deal, like these are all examples, very specific examples of things, of fights that, that we have to refight for because of Trump destroying them. And it wastes a lot of time. There's no progress at all, even even possible in those moments. And of course, it takes everything back. Look at how Trump has lowered the bar in terms of what is acceptable as a Democratic nominee. Trump lowered the bar so much that Joe Biden, with half a brain, is acceptable as a Democratic nominee. So the idea that, oh, if Hillary, you know, if Hillary loses in 2016, well, it's going to, this big progressive left wing uh, swell is going to happen Bernie's going to be president in 2020. It didn't happen. Trump lowered the bar in terms of what is acceptable. So do you really want to see how much lower the bar can go over the next four years? Because I don't. And I'm also tired of Donald Trump in general. So even apart from all the destruction he has caused, even apart from the coronavirus and the clear destruction of the U.S. compared to every other country, apart from all of that, apart from how he's treating the protesters, Apart from all of that, I'm tired of him being on television. I'm tired of hearing from him. I'm tired of his fucking voice. I'm tired of his dipshit face. I'm tired of all of it. Let's end the era of Trump and move the fuck on, please. 3DQW says, I'm not saying we should vote for Trump, but but that it is not clear what we should do after Biden wins. I've said it 20 times now. (laughs) There has to... Power built in multiple ways. So... Continue to primary Democrats, continue this protest movement in the streets, build on that, I would say, focus on specific policy issues. So let's say Medicare for all. March on Washington for Medicare for all after Biden wins and is sworn in. That should be a goal. Um, And as I was saying, local races, uh, state races, uh, building up uh, unions or uh, unionizing your uh, your workplace, uh, joining a, a progressive, progressive movement or some kind of movement, whether it's locally or, um, or nationally or statewide, turn your energy towards something. So there are many ways, there are many different ways to do that. Uh, build a movement outside the party, uh, sorry, a, a party outside the party, outside the Democratic Party. In the, uh, the People's Party, there's the convention at the end of this month. So that's one, another option. Many ways to enact your power, and all of the above is the approach. There's enough people to do all of it. And as long as the the, the uh, policy message is unified in terms of what you're fighting for, then you're all working together to accomplish progress. All right. Last ones right here. Ben Riley says, what corrective records do progressives have if the DNC says no to every demand and liberals go to sleep again, like under Obama, who don't want progressive change because it's disruptive? Obama had political talent. Obama ran as a hope and change candidate. Those two things combined made most people think that Obama was going to do something in the first two years. That is much different than with Joe Biden. From the start, there is already a movement of people against Joe Biden. Joe Biden is not running to be hope and change. It's quite clear what Joe Biden's running on. He's open and honest that he is not a hope and change candidate. So it is a lot easier to fight and to build a a movement against that party. Now, saying the DNC says no to... The DNC is not a person. The DNC has members. So different members do different things. This is why focusing on leadership... Primary, primarying out members of, of Democratic Party leadership is very important, which you're already seeing the Just Democrats do. And you're also now going to have a contingent of people in the Democratic caucus that do not agree with the status quo Democratic Party politics. You have AOC, Rashida Tlaib, Ilhan Omar, uh, Bernie Sanders, of course, uh, Jamal Bowman, Cory Bush, Ro Khanna, others that are going to be a unified voice for change. 
and will be able to use their platform within Congress to push for that change and in, in the process build more of an awareness around the failures of the Democratic Party and what is not being done. At the same time, also dumping this massive crisis on the Democratic Party when they have no real solutions. So that's going to wake even more people up. Understand that it's all about power dynamics. You have to build the power. So you can't simply uh, say that DNC will say no to every demand. You have to build the power, the power necessary to take over positions, to threaten their seats. They're seeing how easy it is for someone like Lacey Clay, a, a, from, from a dynasty, 19-year incumbent, getting primaried out by Cori Bush. That is massive. Elliot Engel, another staple in the Democratic Party House, getting primaried out. Joe Crowley in uh, line to be Democratic Speaker behind Pelosi, primaried out by AOC a couple years ago. Again, these are examples of what is possible. And we continue to see that movement build and understand because there isn't an unlimited amount of money, it can't happen all at once. These progressive uh, or left-wing challengers are running with small dollar donors, are not running with big money. So there is always going to be limitations in that sense, which is why there should be focused fights on Democratic leadership, which there has been for the most part from the Justice Democrats. So it's it, it's a game, right? Like it's, it's, it's a long-term game. You have to understand that this can't happen overnight. And also the point I wanted to make, um, with that, with those members in the Democratic caucus, like AOC, like Rashida Tlaib, Cori Bush, Jamal Bowman, with Trump gone, they are now able to focus their fight on the Democratic Party and Joe Biden. And you're already seeing that. I mean, they, they were, they're already open about them disagreeing with Joe Biden and, and his platform. You saw Ro Khanna vote against the DNC platform. So if they're already doing this while Trump is still president, the shackles are off when Trump's gone. And it allows them to really push that message forward.